click the bell icon to get latest videos from ikeda hello friends this is the video for the chapter understanding representation and description in our subject digital image processing we actually started this chapter to understand the simplest boundary following algorithm as far as the representation is concerned we have also gone through the understanding of chain codes then we have the representation of the boundary approximation using the minimum perimeter polygon using the signatures skeletons we have covered now we introduce the second term of this chapter title with the topic boundary descriptions and the prominent one we have taken in the last video that is shape numbers now the another popular in this family that we are going to cover in this video that is fourier descriptors so let us see the details so here we can start discussing our topic fourier descriptors so very first of all let us visualize a figure that shows a k point digital boundary into the xy plane so a digital boundary and its representation as a complex sequence you can see here on to the horizontal axis we have marked the x here the real part and on to the vertical axis we have the representation of the imaginary part by jy here on to the real part we have the markings of x0 x1 you can see and the corresponding markings on to the another axis you can see as y0 and y1 so this is just a representation of the digital boundary and the representation in the complex sequence now starting at any arbitrary point as shown x0 y0 the coordinate pairs like x0 comma y0 x1 comma y1 x2 comma y2 up to x suffix k minus 1 comma y suffix k minus 1 are encountered into the traversing this boundary in the counter clockwise direction so these coordinates can be expressed in the form x of k is equal to simply x suffix k and y of k as simply y suffix k so with this notation in carrying forward the boundary itself call can be represented as the sequence of coordinates so s of k is equal to the square bracket involves x of k comma y of k so this is applicable for the small k values starting at 0 1 2 and going up to capital k minus 1 moreover each coordinate pair can be treated as a complex number so that we can have the expression s of k is equal to x of k plus j y of k here so this is also applicable to small k that starts with 0 then proceeds with 1 2 and so on up to capital k minus 1 so the meaning is that the x axis is treated as the real axis and the y axis as the imaginary axis of the sequence of complex number so here the nature of the boundary itself was not at all changed of course this representation has one great advantage so the advantage is that it reduces a two dimensional to a one dimensional problem now the discrete fourier transform that we have already covered in our chapter number three the image transform that actually comes from the signal theory so it is first of all the one dimensional discrete fourier transform simply we abbreviate as dft and for the images to directly operate under this particular transform we call it 2d dft so the dft of s of k represented into the above equation we can give as a of u computed as 1 upon capital k having the summation operation with the index factor small k that ranges from 0 to capital k minus 1 operated over the multiplication of s of k with the exponential e to the power minus j 2 pi u k divided by capital k so here the small u representing the transform domain starts with 0 1 2 and so on up to capital k minus 1 so the complex coefficients that we have represented in the transform domain by a of u are called as the fourier descriptors of the boundary so this is actually the title that we have given the inverse fourier transform of this coefficient is also possible that restores the s of k value that is given by the correlation of the inverse transformation s of k computed as 
the summation with the index factor this time small u is equal to 0 to capital K minus 1 operated over the multiplication of the Fourier domain representation of the boundary A of u in multiplication with the exponential e to the power plus j 2 pi u k divided by capital K. So here small k has 0, 1, 2 up to capital K minus 1 values. So suppose however that instead of the Fourier coefficients only the first p coefficients can be used. The result of following approximation to the s of k can be given as s cap of k computed as the summation with the index factor u equal to 0 to capital p minus 1 operated over the multiplication of a of u by the exponential e to the power positive j 2 pi u k divided by capital k. So here also small k ranges from 0 1 2 up to capital k minus 1. Although the capital p terms only are used to obtain the each component of s cap of k the k still ranges from 0 to capital k minus 1 that is the same number of points exist in the approximate boundary but not as many terms as used in the reconstruction of each and every point here. So here we recall from the discussion of the Fourier transform that the high frequency components account for the finer details into the image sample or simply the signal any if you take and the low frequency components determine the global shape. Now because of this particular reason the smaller capital P becomes the more detail that is lost onto the boundary. Now the following example demonstrate this particular case very very clearly. So here we take the example and the figure in this example shows a square boundary consisting of capital K is equal to 64 points reconstruct this particular boundary for the various values of capital P. So here we show this particular figure the examples of the reconstruction from the Fourier descriptors. So P is the number of Fourier coefficients used in the reconstruction of the boundary. So you can start at the top left here that is representing the original boundary with k is equal to 64 value then we can proceed with p is equal to 2 the circular fashion p is equal to 4 p is equal to 8 p is equal to 16 p is equal to 24 p is equal to 32 p is equal to 40 p is equal to 48 p is equal to 56 p is equal to 61 and at p is equal to 62 if we get the boundary shape that resembles the original shape with k is equal to 64. So we can mark one note here that the first note the value of the p has to be about 8 before the reconstructed boundary looks more like a square than a circle. And the second note that little in the way of corner definition occurs until the capital P is above the value 56. So we have represented the 62 value actually at which time the corner points begin to break out for the sequence. And the third note we can make that when p is equal to 61 the curves begin to straighten and which leads to the almost exact replica of the original one additional coefficient latter. Thus a few lower order coefficients are able to recapture the gross shape of the original boundary but many more higher order terms are required to determine accurately the sharp features such as the corners and the straight lines. So now a few of the Fourier descriptors can be used to capture the gross essence of the boundary and this property is very very valuable because these coefficients can be carrying the shape information into them. So thus they can be used as the basis for differentiating between the distinct boundary shapes. Now the descriptors should be as insensitive as possible to the cases of translation, rotation and scale changes that we have already stated as well. In the cases where the results actually depend on to the order in which the points are processed and additional constraint is that the descriptors should be insensitive to the starting point also. The Fourier descriptors are not directly insensitive to these geometrical changes but the changes in these parameters can be related to simple transformations onto the descriptors. So for example we consider a rotation 
from the elementary mathematical analysis we can say that the rotation of a point by an angle theta about the origin of the complex plane accomplished by multiplying the point by the exponential e to the power j times theta so doing so to the every point of s of k rotates the entire sequence about the origin value the rotated sequence that can be shown as s of k into e to the power j theta whose fourier descriptors can be given with the computation of a sub x r of small u here so the computation is 1 upon capital k in multiplication to the summation operation carried out the index factor small k ranging from 0 to capital k minus 1 over the multiplication of s of k with e to the power j theta into e to the power minus j2 pi u k divided by capital k so simply we can write the earlier small a of u notation into e to the power j theta now here small u also starts with 0 then 1 2 3 up to capital k minus 1 we can go for so thus the rotation simply affects all the coefficients equally by a multiplicative constant term that has been shown as e to the power j theta the table that we are supposed to visualize here that summarizes the fourier descriptors for a boundary sequence denoting s of k that undergoes rotation the translation scaling and changes into the starting point so some basic properties of the fourier descriptor you can see in this table the first column is marked with the title that is transformation so the identity rotation translation scaling and the starting point cases we can see corresponding to the second column describing the boundary here as sequentially s of k s sub x r of k computed as s of k into e to the power j theta for the case of rotation for the case of translation we have s sub x t of k computed as the addition of s of k with delta sub x x y for the case of scaling the boundary is having the representation described s sub x s of k is equal to alpha into s of k and for the starting point case we have s sub x p of k is equal to s of k minus k0 the corresponding fourier descriptors can be given as simply a of u for the first case of identity for the rotation a sub x r of u is equal to a of u into e to the power j theta that just now we have shown on to the previous slide then for the case of translation a sub x t of u is equal to a of u added with delta x y into the impulse del of u here then for scaling we have a sub x s of u computed as the multiplication of alpha to a of u and at last for the starting point case we have a sub x p of u is equal to a of u multiplied with the exponential e to the power minus j2 pi k sub x 0 into u divided by capital k so the symbol delta sub x x y is actually defined as delta sub x x y is equal to delta x plus j times delta y so the notation s sub x t of k is equal to s of k plus delta sub x x y it actually indicates redefining that is translating the sequence as s sub x t of k is equal to the first bracket in square bracket x of small k added with delta x and then we have the addition with the imaginary part hence j in square bracket we have y of k added with delta y so in another words also the translation consists of the adding a constant displacement to all the coordinates in the boundary so we can mark one note here that the translation has no effect onto the descriptors except for u value is equal to 0 which has the impulse function denoted del of u here finally the expression can be given that is s sub x p of k is equal to s of k minus k0 that i have shown into the table it means redefining the sequence as s sub x p is equal to small x in the bracket k minus k0 plus j times y in the bracket k minus k0 which merely changes the starting point of the sequence to k is equal to k0 from k is equal to simply the zero value 
so i hope this particular discussion has definitely benefited you to clear the concepts regarding our topic by the next lecture we carry another topic in the family of descriptors to discuss statistical moments so i am sure you are definitely getting the knowledge with respect to the digital image processing subject for more information you can definitely subscribe to our ekda channel thank you